you need to immediately recognize that this is a plug points into equations question. There are other ways to think about it, but like you've got to recognize, okay, they gave me a bunch of equations and the choices, and they gave me a bunch of points. Yeah, they didn't use X and Y, they used C and P, but it doesn't matter, right? Now you could solve this by kind of thinking about slopes and intercepts and kind of converting these equations into Y equals format, but I think that's risky and unnecessary. You could also create some sort of regression in Desmos, but again, I think that's risky and unnecessary. Like just just plug the points in, right? Now they make it very clear what C and P are. So we should be careful here because um, notice that in the, between A and B and C and D, they're flipping the, the relationship, right? They're putting the P and the C in different places. So we need to know what we're getting so we plug in in the right place. So they tell us that C is the number of cars. Okay, great. And then this must be the P. So that's that, right? It doesn't take more than a second to just like get that out. Now I'm gonna just go down the line. Let's just try choice A because I don't know, which is most intuitive here. So it's gonna be 55 times this number minus the 174. So, okay, 55 times three, 55 times three, regular calculator, I'm not even using Desmos here, um, minus 174 is negative nine. So that checks out, but let's do it for the other choices, right? So 55 times five, 55 times five minus 284 is still negative nine. So that looks good. And let's get one more check, 55 times 10, minus 559, negative nine. So triple check, I'm done. Uh, the reason I went down the line with this one equation instead of something that I normally do, which is I usually pick one point, and I try that same point in all the equations, is I can tell that these equations are switching the C's and the P's, and I just don't wanna get confused by that. So I'm, I'm like, okay, what, what's, let's keep the most complicated thing consistent, and then we'll go from there. So uh, it just so happened that A was right. I mean, obviously, if D was right, this might've taken more time, but remember that it's very unlikely that you would get past plugging in that first point, right? So if we did it for B, the first point doesn't even work. Uh, I think C, same thing. None of them are gonna work past the first point. So you're basically done there, but you should confirm because the SAT's most common trap with questions like this is that you'll get a point that works in the wrong equation for one of the points but then the other points, it won't work. So you'll be able to kind of prove it wrong if you keep going, but if you stop short and just pick the first thing that works the first time, you will get it wrong occasionally. So uh, I, I'm warning you, that will be a trap that will happen on the SAT, I can guarantee that. So just make sure you're a little bit more thorough than just the first thing that works, and you should be fine to lock in these points very easily.